Welcome to the Career Change Podcast, where you'll discover the frank and practical advice and resources that are already proven to work in the real world when it comes to changing careers or figuring out what business is right for you when you are a smart but likely also stuck, overwhelmed, or overthinking person in your mid 30s, your 40s, your mid 50s. I'm your host, Ricky Hansen, a career change advisor, entrepreneur, and former corporate HR professional with over 15 years' experience of helping thousands of people just like you identify or create careers or businesses that are both meaningful and future-proof. Welcome home. Hey, it's Ricky here and welcome to episode 10 of the Career Change Podcast. Now, right up front, I want to let you know this episode will be a little bit different. It's going to be more of an espresso than a deep dive. And here's what I mean by that. I have had a lot of emails from my newsletter subscribers over at thecareerchangepodcast.com asking for help dealing with all of the uncertainty, literally the uncertainty on steroids that's going on right now. You know, take your pick, COVID, politics, confinement, lockdown, Brexit, climate change, terrorism, you name it. So a lot of you have been asking, how can I stay focused and how can I keep going with my career transition, with my business, when there is so much to distract us and so much to worry about? Have you got any quick proven tips that I can implement right away, like a painkiller? Yes, I do. And also what I want to say, even if you listen at a later stage, this will still work. The world is not going to get any less certain. Like I've said many times, the speed of change will never be slower than it is now. So welcome to a painkiller edition of the Career Change Podcast. Now, I've helped people change careers and start businesses, you know, for 15 plus years. And and transitions, they always involve a certain amount of uncertainty and not knowing. So the territory we had, especially this year, 2020, is something I'm highly familiar with. Now it's just that everybody is becoming, you you know, becoming familiar with it as well, or at least experiencing it. And, and that's really part of the process of changing careers, starting a portfolio business or, you know, your own business or an online business, whatever it is that you want to do next, or if you want to figure out what you want to do, it's still about how to keep going and how to still create the career or business or life that is right for you at this stage. Because here's the deal, even when you create that business or you change that career or, and you then do that again later on, there's still going to be discomfort there's still going to be change. Make it mean something, my friend. Do something constructive with it rather than hoping for it to go away. Learn and adapt now. All right. So let me give you some really concrete tips for how to do that. Because one of the things that my private clients, they find really helpful is I often give them these short phrases that they can repeat to themselves, followed by action so they can refocus themselves and get right back on track with what truly matters. And most importantly, get return on investment on their time. Just think about the amount of scrolling, doom scrolling, stress scrolling you've done this year alone. Just think about how much better you could have invested that time. Think about if you've taken all that time and invested in on creating that next career, that next job, that next business, you get my point. So I literally, I sat down yesterday and I wrote down the five phrases that I've pretty much been repeating the most this year and especially over the last couple of months that my clients have told me have been most helpful. And I won't do my typical kind of neuroscience psychology geek out here. It's going to be very Scandi IKEA instructions for not freaking out or not going bonkers. All right, short and powerful. We'll start with the with a slightly easier one and then work up. Now, what I want to say right up front, just to be clear, it goes without saying, I hope, that this is only going to work if you are actually the kind of person who's willing to decide that decide what you really want and then commit to creating it. If you're not willing to do that, nothing is going to work for you. That is often the missing link. It is that commitment and knowing what you want or committing to figuring out what you want, okay? Because if you don't make your career transition, your business a priority, someone else will decide your priority for you. And that's probably something you really noticed this year, whether it's your boss, the media, a certain orange blob, whatever it is, okay? So promise me, learn to take really good care of yourself and what you want. That is what is going to help a lot more than anything else. And of course, a disclaimer, because this is going out around the world, this is not medical advice, nor is it meant to replace it. What I do recommend you do, though, listening through these suggestions, 
whether you agree with them or not, try them out if they're helpful. That what matters. It's more important that it works, okay? Going straight into number one. Number one is to minimize information input. That's minimizing information input. That is pretty much the biggest issue right now. And if you only do one, potentially start by doing this one because it will help you right away. Have you noticed, probably not just you, but everyone else around you, we are mentally exhausted at this stage. We've just got too many things coming at us. And if you don't have a filter or what I like to call the bouncer of the mind, then you might potentially end up literally like a bulimic, stress scrolling, doom scrolling. And this is something I've seen a lot of people getting into this really bad habit this year. And it's totally understandable. Your brain thinks that the more information, you know, it, it scrolls for information to hope to feel better. But have you noticed that technique doesn't work? And here's what I want you to know, whether there's a pandemic, whether there's a crazy political situation going on, whatever it is that whenever you're listening to this is happening, if you want to change careers, if you want to start your own business and you want to keep going, you need to decide and commit to be very selective with your resources, both in terms of the quantity and the quality. And you really want to avoid overloading. The cognitive overload that you are likely experiencing right now, I don't need to tell you that it's exhausting and decision impairing. But it's really, really important to minimize information input right now. Our nervous system is already in a hypervigilant state. Oh God, I did say I was not going to geek out too much, but you know what I mean. Just think about it. Every time you go out, you're trying not to right now, for example, catch the virus. Then you come home, stress all along and scroll and scroll looking for some kind of information. This has been going on for months. Here's the deal. We need to stop that because it's not helping anyone so rule number one, minimize information input. And here's what I really, really recommend you commit to. I'll repeat this. Be highly protective of what you let into your mind. Your brain has got a limited processing capacity. Spend it wisely and on the things that matter to you. This is so important if you want to do anything important in the world. Remember, the job of the news and the media is to make every problem out there seem like your problem in here right now. I'll say that again because it's so important. The job of the media and especially the job of the news is to make every problem your personal problem, okay? We all know that's not the case, but we fall for it every time. So decide just before you go on to do the school or you go to find the information, just ask yourself, is this going to really be good return on investment? Is this a good use of my time? What I'm actually looking for? And also, what is the filter with which I'm going to decide who to listen to or not listen to? And this is so important because when one of these crazy things, and this is something that science and psychology is catching up with, is that with the time we spend online, if you think about it, is a disembodied, you kind of don't have a body. It's this crazy no man's land. And we can literally, it can almost feel like a Black Mirror episode, right? You kind of lose your boundaries between you and what is the world. And we just, it's very dangerous to spend so much time disembodied without filters. So boundaries, my friend, both in terms of the quality of the information and the time that you spend, you get my point. Be exceptionally protective of your mind carefully with your sources, with your resources. It's exactly the same thing when it comes to finding information for your career change, for your business. Be really careful who you listen to. And also the quantity of the information. A lot of the people coming my way, they're the multi-passionates, the overthinkers, and they gobble everything up. No wonder, my friend, if you're exhausted right now, be careful. Don't just, you know, you don't need to kiss everyone coming your way, right? Be selective, be exceptionally careful. Is it going to be worth your return? You know, is it going to give you a return on investment? Minimize information input. Number two, that is stop the worst case scenario spiral. Stop the worst case scenario spiral. You know what I mean. You read something and straight away, it clearly means that you'll never find a job again or you'll never be able to change careers or that business idea is going down the drain and rah, you know, literally from a small piece of information, you go into this kind of spiral. 
If you haven't, you know, I'm sure you've experienced this. We've all been there. One of the fastest ways to stop that is to do something physical, to change your physical state. This is something I always tell my clients. Whenever you literally have that moment when you're just about to take whatever piece of information, which is probably not from the right kind of resource, and then go into that spiraling you have in that moment, you step in, you literally, you get out of your chair, you jump up on your sofa and you start moving, change your physical state, that gap between what you read and how you interpret it, interrupt it. The best thing I've found is dancing and it doesn't matter what age you are, what sex you are, just get up and move your body. And this can be super quick. What I literally recommend that you have, you have a couple of playlists, you literally have it ready and you just turn it on. Ideally music that just really funky, groovy, whatever your thing is that gets you moving. And ideally also it just have to be one song or even 10 seconds or 20 seconds or three minutes. Just move your body, get up. And if you don't like dancing, just literally like run circles around your house, whatever it is with some music. But Get yourself out of that worst case spiral. Interrupt it before it even happens. That's so important. Also, if you really, really don't like dancing and movement, something like a breath hold. I'm sure you've heard of Wim Hof, the Iceman. These breath holds where you just make the body get used to being uncomfortable, but then hold the breath through it can be really, really helpful as well. But physically stop the worst case spiral. Don't allow it to happen. You can even just do it if you're lying on your sofa. Just stand up and move on your sofa instead of lying on it. (laughs) That's the physical way of interrupting the, the worst case spiral. Another one to do it is what I call number three, borrow better thoughts. Borrow better thoughts. You probably don't need help having really scary, horrible thoughts. You know, we are wired for negativity as a species, but often what happens during times of immense uncertainty and stress, you can get into a really, um, you, your brain, your, your mind can potentially be not a nice place to hang out. Now, one of the fastest ways to change that, and also this goes with stopping the worst case spiral, is to borrow better thoughts. And here's what I mean by that. Have you noticed, you know, unless you're someone who's meditated for a long time, or you're some kind of saint, it can be really difficult to be an objective observer of your thoughts. A much faster way to deal with it is really to borrow other people's thoughts that are better and even just neutral And ideally something that doesn't involve a screen because we're just all screened out. We got the screen burn. So audiobooks, podcasts, just plug it right in. Again, always have it lined up, whether it's a Pinterest board or a playlist or whatever it is, so you know it. And just listen, Um, several of of, um, you listeners have told me you like listening back to the Career Change podcast, whatever it is, if you're finding that helpful and you're doubting yourself and you're worrying, listen back to episodes of podcasts that you love. The same thing with audiobooks, just interrupt that train of thought, you know, borrow better thoughts, neutral ones to help rewire. Sometimes that's one of the fastest ways to do it. It's not the only one, but right now during times of emergency, that's a great way to do it. What I've also found this year, especially 2020, is what's been really helpful both for myself, for a lot of my clients, is to listen to audiobooks that might be both for children and adults. So things like Neil Gaiman, um, Philip Pullman, Lord of the Rings, you know, Tolkien, C.S. Lewis, Narnia, um, Scandinavians love Astrid Lindgren, you know, whatever your, especially stuff where you grew up in your culture or maybe another culture, try that out. It's that kind of, you know, it literally breaks the train of thought because it's really not to do with that scary thing you were, you were thinking about. So it gives you like a breather. And also ideally, there are so many beautiful audiobooks right now where, um, for example, uh, one of Philip Pullman's book is narrated by Michael Sheen, who just has the most amazing voice. And there is something so sensual and so immediate about other people's voices that can almost get you out of your head, for lack of a better word, or at least get you out of that stress loop. So try that as well. I, I found that look, you know, works really, really well. And also, during normal times or, or less stressful times, also things like book about psychology, neuroscience, or your favorite role models. 
entrepreneurs, you know, that's a really good habit to get into as well. Learn about how they handle difficult times. My favorite um, in terms of neuroscience right now is Andrew Huberman. He doesn't actually have a podcast or a book yet, but he's been in, interviewed on a lot of podcasts. Andrew Huberman, he's really incredible in terms of teaching you neuroscience in a really intelligent, but still straightforward manner. So he's my, my guy go to right now. But borrow better thoughts. Moving straight on to number four, schedule worry. Schedule worry. Let's face it. I'm not going to, I'm not telling you to stop reading the news or stop keeping informed about COVID or anything else, nor am I telling you to stop worrying. If you listen to any of my podcast episodes, you know that I'm not a Pollyanna. However, what is really important is that you don't keep opening up loops that you don't close and are therefore at the back of your mind because you keep scrolling and then therefore keep opening new loops of worry or you keep worrying. So one of the things that have been really helpful for my clients over the years and especially this year is to schedule specific time where you worry. So let's say, for example, it's every day at 5 p.m. or 9 a.m., whatever it is that's going to be most helpful for you to get it done. And that means you sit down, let's say at 5 p.m. and you go into total prepper mode, you know, prepper, where you're literally like, okay, what's going on? What do I need to know? What are the things I need to worry about? No, just go crazy. You know, 5, 10, 20 minutes, whatever it is. Just go bunkers for a little bit, but then get really, really practical and ask yourself, okay, is this destructive worrying or productive worrying? You might have heard me talk about that before. So destructive worrying are these kind of free-floating worries where it's a problem that you really cannot solve it out of your hands and you probably don't tend to think about it with a pen in your hands, whereas productive worrying, there's something you can do about it now or very soon. So you can actually write down the next action and you can action it so you actually feel like you're closing the loop. Whereas the free-floating worries, the destructive worries, you can worry about them at 5 p.m. if you want, but then you need to let them go. That also means that you, you keep closing loops, which is so, so important. And let's it's also helpful because then throughout the day, let's say that your scheduled worry time at 5 p.m., that means that if you start, you know, 9 a.m. or 11 a.m. going, okay, it's not my worry time right now, write down the worry. Actually, physically, if you can, put it on a post-it note and put it in the pile in the corner, closed the loop. You'll get back to that bugger at 5 p.m. Thank you very much. Honestly, this this is an incredibly helpful exercise. It might sound simplistic, but it's one of the things that is definitely keeping me from not going bonkers when things are going really crazy. So just try that. It comes from a segment of um, therapy called metacognitive therapy, where it's about getting the bigger picture of you. So schedule worry. And just remember this, Start creating distance as well. Remember, the media's job is to make every worry your worry right now. So make a habit of closing loops. Instead of every time you think about it, every time you open the news or you start scrolling, you are open a loop. That means that you are telling your brain, okay, this is more important right now than my career change, than whatever this and that. When you do the unhelpful kind of scrolling and you're opening a loop, your brain has to deal with an open loop. That's your cognitive load right there. What's left after that? Be careful. Be really protective of your dreams, of the things that matter. So schedule worry. And then number five, the last one is don't just cope, grow. Don't just cope, grow. Let's be fair. I think we all know by now that hoping that things are going to back to normal or hotter until this whole thing is over it's just not really a very realistic strategy because the world is and always has been an ever-evolving scenario of different kinds of right now. Like I said, the speed of change will never be slower than now. So get used to not knowing. I'm not telling you, like some, like I sometimes see people going, ah, oh, get, you know, get comfortable with not knowing. I don't think that's going to happen necessarily. So that's not what I'm telling you. Just get used to not knowing, get used to uncertainty. And remember that no matter what's happening in the world, it's still up to you to decide what you want. And it's still up to you to start creating it. That sure beats hoping, right? This is what's happening, especially 2020. This is a real-time boot camp in building resilience, in learning to deal with uncertainty 
on speed to build the habits that are going to protect yourself, to build, you know, rest and nurture into your schedule. So at the same time, you can keep going, you can keep creating. I think the really dangerous thing about uncertainty, depending on how you come at it, is that it can really make you almost feel like a bystander, like you're totally passive, right? Especially if you do a lot of news gobbling. Or it can make you feel like a real consumer. You just keep gobbling up the news. But here's the deal. The next possible. I like to think of whatever is coming now is the next possible. And you have a decision to make. Do you want to be a bystander, a consumer, or do you want to be a creator and a participant in the next possible? Make this mean something. We are all going through uncomfortable times right now, some people more than others, but make it mean something. Don't just take this lying down. Use it to grow, to come out stronger, to learn to become anti-fragile. Don't just cope, become better, grow, learn, make it mean something. Here's the deal. You've likely, and you know this, I get emails from people all the time, you know, oh, I wanted to change careers for three, four, five, 10, 20 years, but yeah, somehow didn't happen. Now is your chance. Everything that's happened, especially this year and going forward, it'll just remind you that now is the time. And what's really great with a lot of the uncertainty and a lot of the things that are happening, it gives you the biggest permission slip and the biggest excuse for doing what you really want to do because you need to take care of yourself. You create your own safety. Nobody can do that for you. Clearly, Governments have a role to play, but what I mean is that with the speed of change, we all need to create value to look at how we can be active participants and creators of what's you know what's next. Because here's the deal: even what's next, next pandemic, next politician, next, next, this is the territory. There's always something that will interrupt, that will make you feel uncertain. So get used to it. Take it really personally. You are gonna be a creator, a participator, rather than a passive bystander or consumer of what you don't want to happen. So like I said at the beginning of this episode, decide what you really want or decide to figure that out and then commit to creating it no matter what. That is how you will keep going. And then use these five quick interrupters when you need them. You know, number one, minimize information input. Number two, stop the worst case scenario spiral. Number three, borrow a bit of thoughts. Number four, schedule worry. And number five, don't just cope, grow. That's my gift to you this week. Try any of these painkillers. Let me know what you think. Please write a review over on Apple iTunes if you like this. And also share it with people who really need to hear this. So come over to thecareerchangepodcast.com. Sign up for the newsletter. Reply to any of those emails. Let me know. Did you find this helpful? Are there any of these things you want me to go deeper with? What do you want to hear? We will get through this together. We are getting through this, but be really careful. And also here's the thing. Whether you stand still or you move forward, there is going to be uncertainty and pain involved. So why wouldn't you want to choose to create, to create that career, create that, you know, business, make it mean something. Don't be a bystander. Don't be a passive consumer in your own life. Create it. That is the power that you still have no matter how uncertain the world gets. Nobody can take that away from you. Like I said, the, the, how, the job of the media is really to make every problem out there you problem, your problem. Remember, it is not. Be very clear about your priorities and go create that change. I'm sending you the biggest possible hug from here. and I'll see you in the next episode and over at thecareerchangepodcast.com. Thank you so much for listening. Bye.